Your what's up, Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers. It's Kush back at it again with another Giants update video. Before we even get into anything, man, what a first night of the draft! I mean, what a first night of the NFL draft! What a first night for the New York Football Giants. I am personally really happy with how um you know everything went down. Of course, the only thing I'm not happy about, I don't care too much about anymore. You know, that was when, you know, the Eagles and, and Cowboys conspired against us. The enemy of my enemy is my friend type of situation. Jumped ahead of us, got Devontae Smith, who was obviously the guy I wanted at that point. It is what it is. I am very much pleased with what happened after that, with the route that the Giants took in trading with the Chicago Bears. Trading down to the 20th overall pick, receiving a 2022 first and fourth, and then the 2021 first, which was the 20th, and the 194th, I think, or 196th pick from the Bears, which is a fifth round pick, and we didn't have a fifth round pick, so we just got more assets in a really good trade, in my opinion. It was really good value for us. And then we got Kadarius Toney, who is, in my rankings, the fifth best wide receiver in the class, and we got him as the fourth one off the board. He was the one that matched better with the Giants in terms of what we assume this scheme is going to be, based off of last year and based off of Garrett and based off the coaches that we have here. I mean, the more and more I look at the Tony pick, the more and more I like it. Of course, the best thing I like about him is the shiftiness, the speed, the agility. You know, we got the big body physical guy in Galladay. Eh? We got the pure route runner and, you know, also a little bit of a contested catch. Like, Sterling Shepard isn't known for contested catches, but he can make them. And then we got the speed guy in Kadarius Tony. I think it's a nice starting three right there. And now we, ha we are here, day two, sitting for the NFL Draft. And there's a good amount of prospects that slipped, like guys that should have gone in the first round. Very reminiscent of last year, the 2020 NFL Draft. Now, I'm not saying this is going to happen, and if it is, I don't want to jinx it or anything. But of course, last year, players that were supposed to go in the first round are guys like Xavier McKinney, and they did slip all the way to the Giants' second round pick. If we could have something similar happen this year, we're talking about another steal here. But I will say, I must quickly address, there are people who aren't too happy with what we did because there were two absolute studs available at 11 when the Giants made the trade down in Micah Parsons and Rashawn Slater. All this says is that they were really bent on getting a wide receiver. That's what they wanted to attack in the first round. If they were truly, in my opinion, bent on getting best player available, then it would have been Parsons or Slater. But they did get, like, once again, it's not like they got anything bad. A great trade and then a good player at 20. So let's get into the players available here in the second round that could potentially drop to 42. And reminiscent of the McKinney one, if this happens, the first one that's coming to mind for me is the edge position. We got a couple guys that should have won the first in Aziz Odilardi and uh, Joseph Osai. There's also Carlos Basham out of Wake Forest, another edge who, you know, is definitely like a second round type of guy. And Ronnie Perkins, who's risen up the boards as well. If the Giants are going edge, these are the four guys they're going to be looking at. Now, more specifically towards Aziz, if you've been, you know, a viewer of the channel for a while, you know that's the guy I really liked. I was even considering getting him there at 20. I would have loved it if we got him there. But he slipped into the second round. It seems the concerns with Aziz and what caused him to slip was, you know, he had an ACL injury. A knee injury also on uh, back in high school I think and teams were concerned about it for some reason maybe not too confident about it but that is the current story being ran as to why Aziz was slipping on boards if he's the pick at 20 I'm gonna be very happy he completely suits what the Giants are looking for in terms of an outside linebacker in this system he can Rush the passer quite well and he also has the agility to cover a little bit as well drive back and cover sometimes him next to another former Georgia Bulldog and Lorenzo Carter, I think would be a very interesting tandem and duo to have on the linebacking core. And I think he's going to enjoy being here with Kevin Scherer, a former coach, and uh, Jeremy Pruitt, who worked with Kevin Scherer extensively as well. The other big position the Giants should look at, and personally what I think they should go here, is an inside offensive lineman. And I'm specifying inside because I know there's a good amount of Tevin Jenkins fans watching this right now that um, are saying Tevin Jenkins is in there, and if he's in there at 42, we should take him. I don't necessarily disagree with y'all. Right in the sense that Jenkins would be like probably the best offensive lineman on the board. I just wouldn't take him for the fact that 
I'm not looking for a tackle. I'm looking for a guy to play on the inside. I'm not really particularly concerned about our tackles. That's not me saying Matt Pert's going to be a pro bowler or anything at the right side. It's just me saying I'm more concerned about the inside, you know, that right guard specifically, and I'd rather take a chance. Well, actually, not even a chance. I'd just rather take a pick at an inside O lineman that could fill in that spot. And you really got the pick of the litter when it comes to inside O linemen, but these are the guys that you should definitely have your eye on for 42. Landon Dickerson out of Alabama, Quinn Mirnes out of Wisconsin, Aaron Banks, Notre Dame, Wyatt Davis, and of course Trey Smith is another one that's been thrown out there as well. Like in my personal opinion, man, the best guy available here, or you know, as of right now, of course, it's remains to be seen if he makes it to 42. But the best guy if he's there for me is gonna be Landon Dickerson, man. This dude is an absolute monster on the inside. Great size, great intelligence as well, man. 333, I absolutely love that. Big man. And he's one of the only guys here that I have complete confidence in. They could step in and start right away. Now, the thing about Dickerson is, while I don't think he'll have trouble playing guard, I think he's best suited to play center. He's like perfectly suited to play center. And I, it, it's weird, because even though I want him that much, I'm not sure how comfortable I am shifting Gates from center to guard, even though I know Gates can play guard very well. The thing is, I, I kind of want to leave Nick Gates at guard, you know what I'm saying? I, kinda, I mean, I kind of want to leave him at center, I mean, my bad for misspeaking. I think he did a really good job at center. I, I still obviously think he has room to improve, but that's what, you know, his second year at the position is going to do. I think that, you know, him there was a really nice, like, glue for the offensive line, really nice anchor for it, and you really shouldn't, you know, fix something, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it kind of type of thing. Uh, but Dickerson would definitely be best suited at the NFL level to play center. That's not to say he can't play guard. All right, I think he could for sure play guard and he'll be fine. And once again, even if we don't get him, the other names are there to pick through as well. And finally, the one other position that I really want the Giants to consider here, you know, I went over edge, O-line. The last one I think that they should consider in the second round is linebacker. And just like the other two, there's one particular player that dropped that should have won in the first round, in my opinion, Nick Bolton out of Missouri. Before I get into him, let me list a couple other names. Jeremiah Wusu Koromora out of Notre Dame. Baron Browning, Ohio State, uh, Jabril Cox, LSU. Depending how you look at it, this guy might actually be a third round pick. I'm talking about Chad Surratt. I really like him as well. But these are the guys you're looking at. And you know what, since it is day two, I think when I uh, put up a graphic on the screen, I'm not only going to have the guys that they should target in round two, but round three as well for these positions. Either way, a lot of people might want to say, let's go take JOK. That ran a little bit. Don't hate the player, hate the game. Bars. I don't really like JOK for Giants. I view him very similar to Landon Collins, and obviously, you have a similar player like that already on the roster in Jabril Peppers. And I was never really too high on him to begin with, but I can see the appeal and I could understand if the Giants go with him. The guy I'm looking at though, once again, is definitely Nick Bolton. And he's a three down inside linebacker that I could see playing next to Blake Martinez immediately, man. Like he's a very tough and physical player that got good, good instincts. I mean really good instincts because he really should be a starting Mike. And we do have our own starting Mike and Blake. But I can't help but think a duo of Blake and Bolton back there is going to be something that would terrorize the NFL. And I would love to have that on my defense, man. But those are the main guys that I'm looking at in day two, particularly round two of the draft. Once again, I am gonna have a couple more players listed up on the screen for round three as well with these positions. I think these, you know, rounds two and three tonight, we're looking at two of these three positions, O-line, edge, linebacker. You guys let me know what you think. Put your thoughts and comments down below. Is there a player that I might have missed? Like, share, subscribe, and I'm out. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'll catch y'all in the next one.